E3 2018 has delivered more titles that I'm legitimately excited about than any E3 I can remember. Battlefield 5, Doom Eternal, Starfield, Fallout 76, Rage 2, Elder Scrolls 6, Anthem, Division 2, Insurgency, Sandstorm, and honestly just a ton more of titles that look amazing. Bethesda especially killed it this year, but even after getting hyped for all those games, the one announcement that has me the most excited is Halo Infinite. But you might say, level cap, we basically know nothing about this game, aside from the fact that it's on a new engine and it's probably coming to PC based on speculation and Microsoft's Play Anywhere program. And the Halo franchise has been dwindling in popularity for a long time. Why would you be excited for a game with virtually no information about it? Well, simply because I have a theory. A theory that in order to understand, you have to travel back in time with me to the year 1999. Back then, Bungie was its own independent development studio, best known for Marathon and the Myth franchises. It just so happened that at the time I was the world's biggest Myth 2 fanboy, and I was drooling over the rumors of the new IP that was in the works. Halo, the upcoming strategy game? Say what? Halo's a first-person shooter, bro. I don't think you know what you're talking about. Well, it just so happens that in its original concept phase, Halo was going to be sort of a top-down style strategy game, similar to their Myth franchise, and probably very similar in appearance to the Halo Wars strategy games. However, the world that they designed for it was so massive and so ambitious that the developers decided it would be best portrayed from a third-person perspective. We got our first glimpse of what they were working on back at Macworld 1999, announced by none other than Steve Jobs. And if you're unfamiliar with the history of Halo, you're probably thinking, uh, Macworld? Isn't that where you talk about Apple-based products? Yep, Bungie was a well-known Mac developer, and Halo was going to launch first on the Mac platform. Shut the front door, what kind of alternate reality mumbo-jumbo are you even talking about? is what you should say if you don't know the history of Bungie. But funny enough, it's true. Halo was going to be a Mac first strategy game, then a third person shooter, then Microsoft bought them and were like, scratch all that, it's gonna be a first person as a launch title for our new Xbox console, the very first Xbox. Now, obviously this was upsetting for the Mac community to say the least, but as just a gamer in general, it was even more upsetting to see the concept that the world really fell in love with back in 1999 slowly erode into what became a level-based linear shooter. The original trailers for the game showed a massive open-world environment in which you would be able to allegedly explore to your heart's content, not bound by silly invisible walls or box canyons. Go bombing around the hills in the three-seater warthog or hop into an alien craft and fly off into the horizon. At this point in time, there really weren't too many open world games that didn't look like hot garbage, so it was a pretty big deal to have a game that looked this good talking about such a massive open world concept. And even despite the original trailers looking a bit dated by today's standards, they still portrayed an entirely different game concept than what eventually shipped on the Xbox. In all likelihood, the original concept was simply too ambitious, and even with Microsoft's funding, there was no way they could make such an ambitious game in time for the Xbox launch, and even more, certainly not with the limited Xbox hardware. Now even so, Halo Combat Evolved did incorporate some of the open world concepts into significantly smaller levels. Not everything was lost, and you could clearly see some of the giant concepts poking through, especially in the second level of the game. However, with each successive Halo title, the game seemed to become more and more of a corridor shooter with less exploration options and more scripted events, coming further and further away from the original concept. Eventually, the title contained very little of that magic that originally excited me back in 1999. That is, until this new E3 2018 trailer dropped. Along with it was a blog post on Halo Waypoint to better explain a little bit more about the Slipspace engine and the Halo game. Here's what it says. The Slipspace engine demo shown at E3 2018 briefing is the culmination of years of work and is infused with the passion of hundreds of people here at 343 Industries. When we started this project, the team's vision for the game was ambitious. So much so that we knew we had to build new tech to fully realize our goals for Halo Infinite. 
the E3 demo showcases some of the exciting potential of this technology. Everything you see is running in-engine. We still have a long way to go until the, we ship the game, so things will certainly evolve between now and the release of Halo Infinite, though the engine demo is a clear indication of what direction we are heading with our next game and a great snapshot of where our tech is right now. Also said later in the blog post, Halo Infinite will feature Sparth's new art style that draws significant inspiration from the most iconic and historic parts of the Halo franchise. Now there's tons of little Easter eggs and hidden lore in this trailer, but honestly what most excites me and impresses me about this is the fact that they're showing that this is all in-engine. This isn't pre-rendered, this is stuff that shows you the scope and the scale of what this Halo game can be. Very similar shots to what some of the original Halo concept was. This shot of the Warthog driving through a massive open environment similar to how they established some of the trailers in 2000 for Halo. Also showing a lot of flora and fauna, the animals running around this giant herd of rhinoceros-like beast, similar to a lot of the animals that they showed in some of the early Halo concept stuff that never actually made it to the game. They portrayed Halo or the Halo ring as this massive open world environment with its own ecosystems, creatures, and exploration. The idea being that you could find installations on your own and set up attacks and assaults, almost like it's more of an open world Far Cry style approach to Halo. I love the concept of this and if they can actually execute on this idea, this could be the ultimate way to revitalize the Halo franchise, taking the single player to the next level in terms of visual fidelity and scope and who knows what they could do with multiplayer, but the fact that it could be launching on PC simultaneously basically takes me all the way back to 1999, where a massive Halo title that was more ambitious than any other game I had seen is coming out and it's coming to PC. So despite the information delivered with the trailer being fairly limited, aside from some of the exciting little storyline Easter eggs that if you're, again, you're a Halo lore fan, you should definitely look into them because there's a lot of information about how the story could progress. I'm definitely more in interested in just the scope and scale of what this means. And now that you compare it with some of the original trailer footage and the blog post, um, I, I wonder, do you guys think the same thing that I'm thinking right now? Is this sort of a return to the original Halo concepts? Every time I watch this trailer, it seems to just be indicating how this next game is going to have scope and fidelity beyond anything we've seen before. They're showing us grand vistas, day-night cycles, weather effects, massive herds of creatures, multiple different biomes, ancient history and secrets and lore hidden without the world, old Forerunner installations shooting those energy beams up into the sky being scattered throughout the Halo. I mean, this really does seem exactly like what the original game was, aside from the storyline, which does seem to indicate that it will be continuing on the storyline rather than being a prequel of sorts. Also, I like the Master Chief armor. It does look like some of the very early Master Chief armor concepts, and I, I like that they're just taking a new take on all of it. Um, the engine itself, like visual fidelity wise, it is clearly beyond anything else that's been out there before. We've seen a lot of very impressive visuals lately. Far Cry 5, I think, is one of the most beautiful open world exploration games, but this looks even more ambitious than that game engine. The vistas look bigger, the rendering and fidelity looks better. It seems like 343 is trying to take Halo back to the industry game changer that it once was, and I'm all for it, especially if it means re-embracing the initial concepts of the game that were perhaps too ambitious for the time. Now is the time. We have the hardware, we have the technology, and clearly they're working on the engine for it. So that's why this trailer got me more hyped than anything else I saw at E3, despite there being tons of amazing new announcements and titles. I think Halo Infinite could be the ultimate game, and I just cannot wait to get my hands on it, despite them being so early in development. 
what do you guys think? Am I spot on with the analysis or am I, is my nostalgia taking over and sort of telling me what I want to see here with this trailer? Am I, am I taking too much out of too little information? I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Thank you.